Morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. As promised, it's a couple days later. We're going to go ahead and get started on trying to level out the front end of our Rebel. So Ruby here is going to get a set of Bilstein 5100s and some Rough Country for jumper control arms. Um, shouldn't take me too long and it really can't because in about five hours I've got a appointment to get this thing aligned and then I gotta go pick up my kids. So a little bit of a time constraint but really shouldn't take us too long. Uh, full disclosure, I got a lot of the information that I'm about to share with you from Waterfowler41. He's got a 2019 Ramp Rebel, uh, white in color, but he did this basic same upgrade here. Uh, he had gone through a couple different iterations of some things using that uh, traditional 2-inch puck style spacers on top of the struts, and he had some issues with cool bucket contact, or actually I think he had coil contact with the ARs. So he installed these, and this is... The solution to that problem and I think it's the best one. Uh, there's a couple other videos out there and they'll basically say the same thing. If you want to maintain your ride quality, if you want to avoid any fitment issues with things touching that shouldn't be touching, then this is the way to go. It's going to cost you a little bit more money, obviously. I mean you can get those pucks for, I don't know, some of them as cheap as like 75 bucks. Beware of the ones that cost that little. But even an upper control arm package from ReadyLift is $300. Well we've doubled that here. so. Said I got a pretty good deal on the Bilstein 5100s, which I'll show you in a minute, at $250 because they're actually a different part number. I'll give you the actual part number in the description below, but apparently Bilstein changed the part number uh, a year or two ago, and these were quote unquote new old stock, but they're exactly the same. Uh, and the reason why that mattered to me is because I could actually get them. Uh, the current part number, okay, good luck. Uh, they say maybe by the end of March, which is now March 10th, 2022. Uh, so hopefully by the end of March, they're going to start coming back into stock, but who knows. And as far as the control arms, well, you know, right off of Rough Country's website, but uh, again, the um, wonderful Amazon. I got these as an Amazon warehouse deal. They're usually about 360 bucks anywhere you look. Uh, these were 290, we'll call it 295. I'm going to round. But that's about what it was. I saved about 60 some dollars because they were an open box. And when they arrived, there was nothing wrong with them. Perfect in every way. Box had been opened, somebody returned them, or I don't know, maybe there's another explanation. But all told, I probably saved about 75, 80 bucks on doing this. But in the end, once everything's considered, you got about $600 wrapped up in this. And that's a lot of money for two inches of lift. But hey, you know what? Like I said before, you only live once. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So sorry for the handheld jitters, that's a first morning cup of coffee starting to kick in. But let's kind of go through what the process we think is going to be. So again, I told you I actually got some of this from Waterfowler 41. And the goal here is I don't want to actually have to take off the hub nut uh, or the axle nut. And based on what he did, I think that's going to work. But you just got to be really careful about the CV axle and pulling that thing apart. Uh, by putting too much tension on it. So there's a couple things that are going to hold us back. So our goal is, well, remember, we're taking out this upper control arm. So there's two bolts that hold that upper control arm in, but they're going to come later. Uh, other bolts, we've got three uh, top hat bolts that actually connect the strut into the coil bucket. This is our brake line. And while he didn't reference that, I'm going to tell you that you probably want to loosen this nut. There is actually a metal brake line on the other side of this tab that we can pull forward a little bit just to make sure we get a little bit of extra slack. Your ABS wire right here, if you look, you'll see it's got a little alligator clip down here that's no longer going to clip to your A-arm on the new setup. So a lot of the other things uh, out there like the ready lift system, if you look at their instructions, which by the way I did, uh, they tell you this little rubber part here, once we cut this clip off, zip tie it to your brake line and that's going to keep things out of the way of all the suspension travel. Uh, but other things, so obviously we have to disconnect our ball joint from the knuckle. We have to disconnect our lower tie rod end or our outer tie rod end from the knuckle. And the uh, other things included, we want to go ahead and disconnect our sway bar. And there's two ways to do this. If you look at the ready lift system, which again is not the exact same system, but it still tells you how to take the suspension components apart. They actually tell you to drop the whole sway bar out and just leave it connected to the end links down here. We're not going to do that. We're just going to disconnect the lower sway bar end link from each side as we need to. 
Um, the reason why they would tell you to take out both sides at the same time and have the whole vehicle suspended is that sway bar is going to start to put tension on the lower control arm. It's going to make it real difficult, but we have to disconnect the lower uh, sway bar end link just to make sure that this lower control arm actually moves freely. Uh, what else do we have here? So looking through, if you look down at the bottom, you also have the through bolt for the lower part of the strut mount. And that's one of the last things we're probably going to take out. What Waterfowler 41 told you to do, and what I think we're going to try, is we're going to run a strap probably right through here and back to these two keyholes back here. And that should keep, once we disconnect our tie rod end and our ball joint, obviously the lower ball joint is going to be the only thing that's holding this thing up. And this thing's going to want to sway right or left. And we don't want that or out. And if it falls out, it's going to pull out on the front CV axle. If it goes right or left, we risk damaging not only our brake line, but anything else that's in the way. So if we tie it back through here, that'll keep some torsional stability and then some front and back stability of the front of the uh, knuckle so we don't lose control of it. And then I think personally what we're going to end up having to do is once this thing drops out, we're probably going to have to put a little bit of pressure down here and maybe up here just to slide this thing out. But theoretically, it should all slide out as one big piece. And then we'll get our spring compressor out and we'll go to work, but that's a whole nother ball game. So best laid plans anyway, that's what we're going to try and do. And again, I've been through this before. If you've watched my other video on the old Nissan Titan, we did pretty much the same thing. I mean, it's a little bit different, but realistically, it's a very similar setup in the fact that we're using a uh, cool spring and strut front suspension with two A-arms and connecting into the steering knuckle, rack and pinion steering, all that other happy horse s. So we're going to get to work and see what we can do with that. But first, I'll show you what we're going to end up putting on. All right, guys. Well, we're out here on the floor again. I don't feel like setting up a table. I don't feel like going through any of that. So full review real quick. I already introduced these on the last video. Rough Country forced upper control arms for the 2019 to 2022 uh, Dodge. Nah, we don't call it that anymore, right? The Ram 1500 DT. And these are meant for a three to three and a half inch lift. So again, just to review, why is that gonna work for us? Well, because we're only lifting two inches, right? Theoretically. Well, as I mentioned before, your uh, Ram Rebel comes with longer springs on it, essentially, with those Bilstein shocks that come from the factory. So one inch of factory lift over any other four wheel drive Ram 1500. Plus, we're going to come up about two inches. And so what that's going to do is do a theoretical lift of a total of three over stock from a regular Ram 1500. And so that'll give us exactly what we need for this ball joint angle. So it's going to work perfectly. And they're really nice units. Over here, we've got our Bilstein 5100. Zinc plated versus the yellow. So uh, a little bit of a higher quality unit, a little bit dampening uh, difference inside, but pretty close to what we're looking for as far as ride quality. And then you can see these little circlips here, rings uh, machined into the body of the shock. And that's how we're gonna achieve our lift. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different positions that we could use with theoretically the lowest one being as close to stock as we're gonna get. So if we were just replacing this unit uh, for the factory unit, then we would use this lower position. But uh, these top two positions are not going to be used for us because remember we already have a one inch lift on these rebels so anything more than that is going to overlift the vehicle and it's going to raise the front end higher than the rear is going to create some suspension articulation issues and we don't want that so as we go up if you look at the instructions over here which we're not going to uh, it'll tell you what the basic uh, estimated lift is going to be but i'm just going to jump to the end and tell you that we need to be on position number five from the bottom so one two three, four, five, which means we're going to have two rings left over at the top, and that's where we're going to place this circlip. Uh, and that's where our spring perch is going to mount. If you look in the kit, so this is actually going to be the top cap to the top of our strut once we get everything put together and we get the spring perch slid down over top of that circlip. But uh, the spacer here, we're not going to need that because we're replacing a Bilstein 5100 with a Bilstein, I think it's a 4600. Uh, series shock body, they're the same. They're the same diameter, so the spring perch is gonna slide right down over that circlip. So we don't need this. This would be for the other Ram 1500s that don't have the off-road suspension package. So we would actually need the spacer because the spring perch would sit down over top of it. But 
We're not going to use this, so we can throw this in the bin, as the Brits say. But that's what we're putting on here. So pretty self-explanatory. We should end up with a little under two inches of lift on the front for a total of three overstock from a regular ram, right? At least that's what we're shooting for. I think it's going to work out because guess what? Other people have already proved this. This is just my version of that. So you can hear me talk at nauseum and you'll probably get tired of hearing me, but we're going to get into doing some work now rather than sit here and talk this thing to death and uh, beat the dead horse, okay? Let's go. All right, well, let's bring you up to speed. Uh, I'd say easy enough, but uh, there were a couple things that gave me a fight. So right now, uh, I've got the strap on to hold everything together. I haven't removed all the bolts. So what's up next is to actually move this castle nut for the lower ball or upper ball joint, and then this whole thing will tilt forward. But this was a sticking point right here. So theoretically, with a BFH, I should have been able to whack this a couple times. That vibration should have loosened up the stem for the ball joint. It should have popped open. Well, these have never been touched from the factory because Chuck's not that old. So I had to get into the uh, tactical reserve there, wherever the hell it went, and go into some specialty tools to pop that ball joint loose because it was in there pretty good. And uh, I was worried I was actually going to damage the knuckles. So needless to say, we leave the nut on there and I was able to pop it loose. I'll give you all the nut sizes in the description. It's just gonna be easier. But I've already loosened up our upper control arm bolts as well as our top hat bolts just to loosen them up so I don't have to struggle with it. Uh, I've also loosened up the lower fork bolt that goes down into the lower control arm for the strut assembly. And what else have I done? What else have I done? You would have seen me remove the bolt for the brake line and I have disconnected the ABS sensor wire from the upper control arm. And for the most part, everything's ready to go. Our sway bar end link is disconnected. It's just still sitting in the mount because you can't get it to pop out until we lower that lower control arm some. So basically we're gonna see what happens here. You're gonna take a ride with me because uh, I don't have a big enough wrench because apparently a couple of my impact sockets broke. So what we're using is just a plain old crescent wrench to uh, break out the lower ball joint loose, and it actually was pretty easy to do. So uh, these are nylock, so they don't have a cotter pin on them, which is one of the things I'm not used to. Nothing on this truck, apparently, at least on the front end, has a cotter pin on it. So pretty easy. The front tie rod end link does have a nylock as well, but these bolts are gonna get replaced, so these nuts are gonna get replaced with the new control arms. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, my tools are everywhere because I started cussing and screaming, but theoretically I should be able to just pry up on this thing and it'll pop loose. I'm going to hold this just to make sure because I really don't want this going one way or another and we're going to test it. So, yeah, it, it's, it wants to roll. Uh, unfortunately, I've taken the tension off, but I think if we tension this up a little bit more, we should be pretty good for right now. Well, first things first, we're going to take out our upper control arm bolt to give us some working room. Right now we've got this held up pretty good, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, I might just have to reposition that strap. So I'll be back with you in a couple minutes, but once we get upper control arm out of the way, you can take out the strut without removing the upper control arm, but remember, we're doing that anyway, so why fight with it and have to slide it out? That gives me a little bit of room just to get these studs out and then shouldn't have to wrestle with it as much. But we're probably going to have to push down on the lower control arm just because there's some springiness to it with the bushings in there and it's held in an upright position. So we'll see. But uh, at least that's the plan anyway. Hopefully it all comes apart. I'll be back with you in a minute. I'm not going to film this because uh, if there's children in the room, you don't know you need to hear what I'm going to have to say. Remember, we're doing the first side. The next side should be a little bit easier because... Theoretically, we've done it. See you in a minute. 
Oh, she's out. It didn't really take much. I had to push down on that lower control arm and uh, everything popped out after I pulled all the bolts. Just be prepared for those top hat bolts to uh, take a while to get out because you can't really fit anything more than a box wrench in there. If you've got a ratcheting one, that's going to help you out a lot. Uh, I have ratcheting ones, but I don't have one in 16 millimeter, which is what that is. Uh, one thing to note, and this is something I learned last time when I did the one on my old Nissan, is make sure you clock your spring correctly the way that it came out. So if you look, uh, this top half bolt, that one right there that goes up through the uh, this coil bucket, uh, I color that one black, and then I just got a center line running down the center. Um, I know that's the old shock, but it'll still help me index it onto the new one. You want your spring to go back in the same way, which means this top hat will go back in the same way. Because otherwise, if it is misaligned, this should run right down through the center of the shock body and bisect the shock fork down here. If it doesn't, uh, you're not going to be able to get the spring back in <clears throat> the way that it came out. And I found that out the hard way and had to take things apart, take tension back off of the spring and uh, put it back together correctly so that it would all go up through the coil bucket and then it would line up at the bottom. Now this one uses a fork. Uh, my other ones did not um, on my old truck, but it's still the same point. I couldn't put the bolt through. So yeah, that's where we're at. So I'm going to go ahead and get the spring compressor out. Here's our new strut. I already got it set for position number five. And we're going to go ahead, and there are some parts you're going to have to reuse, including that shock boot cover. There is a uh, jounce bumper inside that slides over the shock shaft. And a couple other things, including that lower perch mount. That's going to have to come off, and we're going to have to remove the cap that's underneath here. So give me a minute. Let me get set up, and we'll see what we can do. Well, we're back. I got my shock or truck uh, spring compressors installed. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and take our time. We shouldn't have to take too much tension off of these things before it starts to move. As long as it starts to move, that means the tension on the top hat's released. And uh, we should be able to pull that top knot off of the shock shaft and be good to go. So we'll see. We'll see how many turns we have to get. Uh, I don't know. Last time it took quite a bit for my other truck. This one's supposed to be a little bit, a little bit better. All right. I think that'll do it more for good measure and now you can see it's been freely so next thing is is we're going to take off this top nut uh yeah we're looking at it it could be interesting there's a lot of corrosion on there so surprisingly i guess that's where all the road salt sits so we'll be right back with you in a minute but i gotta go figure out what size bolt that is and uh we'll see what happens all right well so it's an 18 millimeter just to let you know for that top nut uh, I actually had to loosen it with an 18 because I didn't have an 18 millimeter deep well and then use a 19 to back it off at the impact because it was pretty rusted on there but it came right off with a couple wax of the impact. Uh, so now we're going to take everything apart and see what it looks like. So again we've got our marks just to help us line things back up but we're going to reuse this top mount and this doubles as the bushing and insulator. We're also going to reuse the, uh, the cover and then really all we should have to do pop this spring out. Here's our jounce bumper. See how the tapered end goes towards the bottom? We're going to reuse that, pull that off, set that to the side. Uh, we're going to have to whack this with the dead blow a couple times and then obviously pop off the end cap here to slide it past, but we don't need to reuse the end cap because the kit comes with a new one and we will reuse this. So, we'll see what happens. Hopefully with the dead blow. Oh, no way. Big dummy. Actually, it might. Eh, probably not. I was hoping we'd be able to use that to knock the cap off, but it still might. Perfect. So we'll just free that up. There we go. She comes right apart. You can see the old one 
has a circlip as well, but that's the main difference between these two. When you look at them, shock body's the same length. The only difference is, is we're moving that spring perch up some. So we're gonna move that spring perch up. In this case, it's actually not two inches, but when you look at the way the suspension articulates, it's gonna articulate to a about a two inch lift. Otherwise, there's not much different. Now, the cool thing is, at least this one, we've got a socket in the top to help us tension that nut down when we go to do it. Uh, this one just had, as is a very standard, a, uh, a hex fitting at the top. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get this thing reassembled and see how it goes. Well, I'd say that's close enough for government work, right? Um, we've got our system all transferred over. Um, everything lines up for the most part. These are the factory marks right here, the little white paint with the green. That's just the top hat of everything. Uh, for the most part, we're lined up down here. Everything looks pretty good. So yeah, uh, you can see our circlip is in there and seated. And I think we're good to go. Um, make sure my line's all lined up. And in theory, we should be able to slip this back into the truck. We're gonna find out in a minute here. Because uh, remember, it is still two inch tall, inches taller. Even though we've moved, there, uh, we have the same shock body, we've moved it up in travel. So now the spring's mounted up here instead of down here. So you can see we've got a little bit of exposure here and here's the dust boot, but it's not a big deal. Um, yup, what I really wish I had it done on this one was actually put some anti sees on top for later. So I think what I'm gonna do is just put some on the top before I slip it back in, so I'm not taking this damn thing apart. But it's, uh, it's all torqued down now, so it ain't worth it. Well, we'll see what happens. All right, let's see if we can get this thing back in the truck. Okay, well, everything's back together. Um, I haven't torqued anything down yet. I'm gonna torque these uh, coil bucket bolts just while I have access to it, because that's not gonna be a big deal. But I wanna get the other side done, get the wheels back on, and then get it down on the weight of the vehicle so before we torque everything down. That way we don't torque any of these, well, I say torque, but we don't twist any of these bushings. Because uh, if we torque them down too tight now and then put the weight of the vehicle on it, those bushings are going to twist as they settle to ride height. So uh, a couple good things about the way that Chrysler put this thing together. One, the upper control arm bolts, the through bolts right here, they have these little tabs on them. They make them super easy to get them back in, but they also make it easy because you don't have to put a wrench on them to tighten them down. They'll just lean against the frame when they bottom out, hand tight, and then uh, we're good to go. You can see, yeah, these, again, cool bucket bolts, they're a bit of a pain in the butt because you got to do them with a box wrench unless you've got a ratchet that'll fit in there. Uh, but again, get yourself a ratcheting one if you have one. I just don't have one of that size. Uh, everything else went back together okay. Um, I had to put a jack underneath and lift the lower control arm up so I could get that bottom bolt in. Otherwise, this thing slid in pretty easily without out having the uh, control arm on. Everything else is all buttoned up. Our sway bar end link. Uh, the bottom bolt on that's buttoned up and you can see I've zip tied my ABS wire to the uh, brake hose. Got the brake hose mount back in, outer tie rod end is back in and again these are all just snug right now. Uh, and the strut looks pretty good in there, right? at least we got that going for us. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other uh, side real quick and then we're going to come back clean all this up and put the wheels on, we'll lower her down, and then we will go ahead and do our final torque. And that is that, all done. So there's definitely a difference up front. And I haven't taken the measurements yet, but it looks like she's pretty level. So, pretty happy with it. Uh, I'll give you the torque specs and everything, like I said, in the uh, description. As well, I'll throw the part numbers for everything that I used. But, yeah, I mean, I think that's really how it probably should have sat from the factory. These things had a pretty good rake on them, which just drove me nuts. So, take a closer look. See how it looks from the outside. And there you go. You can see the top of the control arm. That looks pretty good. And otherwise, it's really not that different when you look at it. So we're using the same dust boot and everything else. What I do like, it actually went together pretty easily. Uh, torquing everything down was a bit of a pain in the butt once I had the weight on it, but all is well and good. 
but the end result is that at least that strut isn't pushed down and I had zero coil contact or coil bucket contact. So we're good to go. Uh, I'm gonna get ready to take this thing to get aligned and we'll wrap it up. All right, well, just finished up at the alignment shop. Another $130 later. Gosh, alignments are expensive. I'm sure I could have done better somewhere else, but you know what? These guys usually take care of me, so uh, they do good work. Took a little while this time. Only about half an hour once the truck got in, but the truck wasn't that far out of alignment, actually. It was uh, really just the tow. Uh, nothing more. Everything else was in factory spec, so they fixed that up for me, and she's driving fine. Ride quality feels, you know, at first glance to be about what it was before. I mean, it's probably a little stiffer, but uh, otherwise I got no complaints so far. So I'll keep my eye on everything just to make sure nothing rears its ugly head. Hopefully it doesn't. I can't imagine what would really go wrong. I mean, the strut is the strut, the A-arm is the A-arm. And everything else doesn't appear to be contacting anything, so I think we're good. Uh, I never had any issues to begin with, so I guess that's a good thing. At any rate, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if something does come up, I will chime back in. But if you're on the fence, if you're looking to see, I don't know, maybe I should do this, uh, you got the money for it, I'd say this is definitely an upgrade that is worth it. As always, thank you for watching, and you stay classy.